Minister of TEAT still doing an assessment on the closure of businesses. General Managing Director of WIB says they are pleased to participate in the ESP. And Minister of Justice has confirmed a COVID positive immigration officer. Those are the headlines for Wednesday, August the 12th, 2020. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, the Immigration Department closure was explained this morning by Minister of Justice, the Honorable Anna Richardson, who revealed that an immigration officer has been diagnosed with COVID-19. The announcement was made at the Council of Ministers virtual weekly press briefing. With regards to our Immigration Department closure explanation, last Friday, August 7th, I was notified by management of the Immigration and Border Protection Services that an immigration officer tested positive with the coronavirus. The officer was already home on sick leave, but due to symptoms, the officer had themselves tested and with a positive result, immediately notified their direct supervisor at IBPS. The management consulted the Collective Preventive Prevention Services, known as CPS, of the situation and presented them with a list of personnel who may have been in close contact with the officer. All immigration office buildings and other justice sections at the AT Illich Road were thoroughly fumigated last weekend. Also during the weekend, CPS findings, it was decided to close the immigration or awaiting CPS findings, it was decided to close the immigration office for the coming week until further notice. Via the different media outlets, the public was informed of this. This is a precautionary measure that is in the interest of safeguarding both the staff and public health, and we do apologize for any inconvenience. Meanwhile, during the weekend, the CPS did their assessment and interviewed the members of the personnel in order to advise IVPS management and staff. On Monday, August 10th, the CPS presented their findings whereby four members of the staff were are currently in isolation. From here, I would like to thank CPS for their prompt response executing the health protocol to the IVPS department. In light of this strict COVID measures and in an effort to protect the health and safety of its customers and staff, the Immigration, Border and Protection Services operates the following on an appointment basis only. Therefore, IBPS have already started to reschedule appointments and I hereby ask the public for your understanding as we work through the backlog of cancelled appointments. I would like to advise clients that there will be no consequences for the, their applications. Please stay tuned for further updates to come with this regard. In the weekend, I was also informed of a similar COVID situation or case um, uh, within our customs department, and the same protocol is being executed by CPS and management. And Member of Parliament, the Honorable Melissa Gums, has tested positive for COVID-19. The Member of Parliament made the revelation via her Facebook page, and it reads in part, Two weeks ago, when MP Peterson tested positive for COVID-19, I actually tested negative. However, with us having been around each other through the course of our parliament work, I took precautions in case of anything. I went into isolation right after banning family and friends from my home while I waited out the incubation period. The member of parliament continues that after two weeks after self-isolation, she tested once more and as expected, she has tested positive for COVID-19. She experienced mild symptoms during her isolation, but nothing major, and she says that she is actually feeling fine. She continues that a negative diagnosis does not mean throwing away the masks or heading out to the club. This is why it is incredibly important to wear your masks sanitize your hands and your face and your space and socially distance to the best of your ability. Her isolation continues for another 10 days. 
And Minister of Tayat, the Honorable Ludmila de Weaver, speaking at the Virtual Council of Ministers Weekly Press Briefing this morning, was asked by a reporter to indicate what businesses have closed since the crisis and what is St. Martin's current unemployment rate. The minister said that she has been doing an assessment. We're still busy doing an assessment businesses have closed. Yesterday during the interview I had with Lady Grace and Minister via Minister Ponofleck, I um, mentioned that there was over 68 shops that were closed in Front Street. So what we're doing now is an assessment of how many, how many businesses have been affected by COVID-19. We already had a, a struggle with the economy since Hurricane Irma because as we were getting back to Almost um, the levels in terms of visitors just about hitting it right before uh, COVID-19 hit in the way that the, the island started off the year in January and February, that everything was cut off. What happened is this COVID-19 pandemic has now eliminated or made it almost impossible for the small chances that were remaining for those businesses that were just just passing by, just surviving. And that is the, the reality and that is the unfortunate situation that we're in now. But I am hoping that I will have that information as soon as, as we're done with our assessment of how many businesses have been affected and have permanently closed their doors. And in terms of the unemployment rate, I'm sorry, I don't have that information available with me now, but I will get that and report that to you. And in more news for you, on August 11th at 4 p.m., St. Martin's new total of confirmed cases now stands at 219, 219. Of the active cases, the Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 94 people, 94, in home isolation. The Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, VSA, the Honorable Richard Panaflex stated, we now have 100 active cases of persons who have contracted COVID-19. Five patients are currently hospitalized and one patient is isolated and being monitored. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 17. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin is 102. 203 people are now in quarantine based on the contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS of persons who may have been in contact with any of the active cases. In a continued effort to control the spread of the virus, CPS has tested 482 passengers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport and 1,020 1020 people through the community. As the number of positive cases continue to increase, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. If you have been exposed to someone with the virus or experiencing flu-like symptoms, please remain at home and contact your family doctor immediately. For any questions or concerns, call CPS at emergency number 914. Minister Panafleck would like to reiterate the statistics show clusters are affiliated with nightlife, bars, nightclubs, lounges, and adult entertainments. He urges all to avoid mass gatherings, continue to wear your masks, practice social distancing, sanitize your hands as frequently as possible, and wash your hands with soap. Due to the spike in COVID-19 cases, government will impose stringent measures as our ultimate goal is to flatten the curve and reduce further spread of the virus on the island of St. Martin. And still to come, Minister of Finance gives an update on the Enterprise Support Project. And I'll have the details of that story and more when SSM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. 
We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Megawati is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. And welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News. And in other news at this time, in a press release issued today, Wednesday, August the 12th, management of the Phillipsburg Broadcasting announced that an on-air talent at Phillipsburg Broadcasting has tested positive for COVID-19. The building will be sanitized and closed for two weeks. The patient was quickly put into isolation and contact tracing began. Those who were in close and direct contact with the patient have been contacted by Collective Prevention Services and told to quarantine for 14 days, along with other instructions. As a precaution, management has also deemed it necessary to let the remaining staff of Phillipsburg Broadcasting into quarantine for two weeks as well and to report to their family or house doctor or if CPS, if symptoms do develop. The building will also be sanitized and all upcoming interviews will be rescheduled. Management wishes a speedy recovery to the affected patient and best of luck to the rest of the staff. To the general public, please continue to follow and adhere to the health and safety precautions and regulations of the Ministry of BSA, Collective Prevention Services, CPS, and the World Health Organization, the WHO. Minister of Finance, the Honorable Arvad Irion, gave the press an update of the Enterprise Support Project, which was launched virtually on Tuesday, August the 11th, and the SSRP. The minister also announced that the business support program deadline is this upcoming Friday, August the 14th, 2020. Yesterday was the virtual launch of the Enterprise Support Project. It is said small to medium enterprises are the lifeblood of modern economies. This is a sector that is considered one of the main engines of the economy and a sector which has been hit hard during this pandemic. In the past, I've heard many complaints. Things have been complicated for MSMEs who were finding it increasingly difficult to retain business orders and obtain credit. We have been hit hard, as I mentioned, by this pandemic, and we haven't gotten the necessary funding we initially wanted for the SRP to give to offer businesses loans. So this project has become even more necessary. The program allows businesses not to just survive this pandemic, but gives opportunity to grow and even invest. I'm excited for the opportunity for the startups because there's also in the past have been rarely um, opportunities for startups in the past. I want to encourage, really encourage, the MSMEs that are in need of financing to sign up. I believe the first two partners are the Ruba Anna Bank and the credits. In reference to the SRP, the list of recipients for the business payroll support was released last week. When the, when the payroll is closed, the list of recipients for June will be released. So far, there are 225 applicants for the business payroll support to avoid missing the deadline, please, on Friday, August 5th, 14th, sign up today. Again, I'd like to make, make it known the deadline for business payroll support will be Friday, August 14th. When applying for income support or unemployment support, please be sure you're applying for the correct one. And also be sure you aren't applying for the social services under the Ministry of ASA, as this is a different program. There are criteria for both, so be sure you're applying for the correct one. You would have to reapply for the correct one if you don't. For income support, you need your 2019 tax declaration forms, so keep that in mind with the time you have to apply. Expired documents would only be accepted up to six months into the expiration date. 
I would like to once again ask the employers to please provide your dismissed employees with a letter stating that you let them go due to COVID-19. The verbiage is important for them to be able to receive similar support. The letter also has to be signed and on the company's letterhead, so it is clear which company this is coming from. The longer you delay the letter, the longer it takes for them to receive the funds. Once again, the deadline for business payroll support is this Friday, the 14th, and the deadline for income and unemployment support will be August 22nd. Please be on time with your application. And as the news continues now, the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Ardwell Irion, met recently to discuss and explain the changes to the St. Martin Stimulus and Relief Plan's business payroll support program, the SSRP. Senior Policy Advisor for the Minister of Finance, Mr. Christian Granum, spoke to our newsroom about the payroll support program. All right, so the SSRP is the St. Martin Stimulus and Relief Plan. It was basically created to um, forego the mass layoffs of employees during the COVID pandemic. And it was created to assist employees in, well, employers paying their employees. So the first iteration of the program was um, you have a certain amount of revenue loss. Uh, we will compensate the payroll by that amount. So, for example, if you had between 50 and 100 percent um, loss in revenue, uh, there was a government subsidized your payroll 80 percent. And so there was a staggered um, effect. So the, the less you lost, the less subsidy you got. So there was the maximum that we did was 80%. The minimum that we did was 60%. Um, through uh, negotiations with the Netherlands, um, that had to change a little bit for us to qualify for more uh, liquidity to help the employers and employees. So that changed now to a 60-20-20 approach where uh, government will subsidize 60% of payroll support, but it's, it's a little tricky to, to, to well, it's not tricky, it's just it's to be technical. explained. Yeah, it's a bit technical. So um, if you have 30% loss in revenue, uh, then we will calculate the new basis which would be, um, so let's say you have a payroll of 100,000 guilders, you have 30% loss of revenue. We take that loss of revenue and we create the new basis. So the new basis will be 30,000 um, 30, guilders of the 100,000 that your salary, your salary costs are. And government would, would now subsidize 60% of that 30%. And the employee would have to contribute 20% of that 30% and then the employer would have to contribute the rest. So that, that is basically one part of the SSRP. We have two other programs that we run simultaneously and that is done by the St. Martin Development Foundation Fund, sorry, uh, the director is Makisha Brooks, and that is the COVID-19 unemployment support and the income support. Uh, the COVID-19 unemployment support was there, it was put in place and it's in place right now for employees that lost their jobs as a result of COVID. So they would have to supply their dismissal letter, which stated um, that they were let go as a result of COVID, uh, their last salary pay slip, and their ID. Uh, it had to be a local ID, so a Dutch, a Dutch ID. Um, and you had to have been let go or released from uh, the Dutch side of the island. And SXM Daily News will have more of the SSRP program changes in tomorrow's edition of our newscast. And in more news for you at this time, on Tuesday afternoon, August 11th, the National Recovery Program Bureau, the NRPB, officially launched the Enterprise Support Project. The launching of the project took place in a virtual setting, which also saw in attendance the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Romi, Egbert J. Doran, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Ardwell Irion, representatives from the Windward Islands Bank, Micro Lending Institution Credits, and the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin, among others. Speaking at the virtual launching ceremony, the director of NRPB, Claret Connor, explained the significance of the project, which is designed to help St. Martin to develop its micro, small, 
and medium enterprise sector. This project is designed to help St. Martin develop its micro, small, and medium enterprise sector through important aspects um, and other components. Initially this afternoon, we are launching the, um, the, the, the project in terms of it with the financial institutions that will be handling the lending of funds and the managing of the funds to the, the various SMEs. But there are other important elements to this as well, and that is in particular providing training to the SMEs and the, F, the, the financial institutions um, to help us build a strong and resilient economy um, and an economy that will be able to withstand future shocks. In addition to the trainings um, and, um, and, and everything else that is included in this, we also look forward to providing this enhanced, improved uh, resilience to uh, as a strong foundation for the economy of this country. And, and as such, we therefore look forward to the support from the Ministry of Economic Affairs, the Ministry of Finance and other organizations such as the Chamber, as mentioned, and the Social Economic Council to foster strong and cohesive collaboration. In the spirit of private and public partnerships, together we will all provide support to successfully execute this mission. And one of the lending financial institutions for the project is the Windward Islands Bank Limited, of which Mr. Derek Downs is the General Managing Director. We at the Windward Islands Bank, we're very pleased to participate in this program. As one of the major financial institutions on the island, we have indeed in the past been supporting small businesses and um, we no doubt found that this program was a, a good program as my colleague just mentioned it took a little time in getting up and running but it is better late than never and uh, we are grateful and glad that the entrepreneurs of the island will be able to benefit from this program the economy really needs an injection at this point in time and maybe uh, it's a good thing that it was delayed because um, this is a time that the country really needs some sort of financial injection and uh, things happening to keep our economy going. I had a lot of interaction with the NRPB team over the last couple of years or so, and uh, we had very good discussions back and forth, and we were able to come to a solid agreement as to you know, what the expectations are. And um, I trust as we go through the project, that it would indeed be successful, and um, I look forward to working with the NRPB team as we execute this project on the island at this time. And we will have more of the ESP launch in tomorrow's edition of SXM Daily News. Now, turning to our weather forecast for August 12, 2020. At 11 a.m., Tropical Depression 11 was located about 1,320 miles east-southeast of St. Martin. The depression is moving towards the west, near 15 miles per hour. This track is forecast to take the system north of St. Martin. Maximum sustained winds are near 35 miles per hour with higher gusts. Gradual strengthening is forecast during the next 48 hours, and the depression is expected to become a tropical storm later today. For the outlook through Friday midday, partly cloudy and breezy with isolated showers possible. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Minister of Education gives an update on distance learning. And I'll have the details of that story when SFM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code, or fingerprint. Download WIB Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time 
For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, viewers, with the reopening of schools on the island, Minister of Education gives an update on the distance learning. The minister says he will retain the assessment and then he will make the adjustments to make sure the distance learning will be done easier. As the week progress, I will re retain the assessments that uh, that are being done so in order to check how the connections were going and how the first week go and then we would be making adjustments to make sure that the online the distance learning can be done more um, easy and for everyone else the department the ministry is busy with a policy on distance learning this policy, when it is finished or when it is further developed, will definitely um, be discussed with the stakeholders before we go public with it. Um, it's not that we do not have any guidelines, but it is to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Indeed, um, the, the reason for this is that, you know, distance learning can be done in various, um, various ways. The public must understand, I think, when we look at the numbers of what's happening in the community, that the spread of the virus is, is, is not going in the direction that we would want it to go. So it is very important for us to realize that health come first. And in the reports that I have brought out before, I have always said health come first. So when the assessments are done by the Ministry of VSR, then and we at the Ministry of Education to, will be able to make us adjustments to the, to the instruction that I have sent out. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow. <music>